Thank you for joining us for this TMJ4 News special as we pay tribute to MLK Day. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carol Meekins. Good afternoon, and I'm Charles Benson. Today is not only a day for our nation to pause, but also continue to push forward in honoring the work and dreams of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So let's talk about that with UW-Milwaukee professor Joe Rodriguez. He joins us now. Professor Rodriguez, thanks for joining us. Um, there's so much that we can talk about and so little time to talk about it, but let's talk about the differences that we are seeing today and similarities to the civil rights movement of the 1960s compared to what we've seen the last year. Well, I'd say one of the big differences is that the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s uh, had a clear objective, which was to enforce the 1954 uh, Supreme Court decision in Brown versus Board of Education. So desegregating the schools uh, was a clear uh, objective. Uh, they wanted also to uh, desegregate transportation system and uh, uh, public accommodations. The, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement is a little bit less clear on policy issues uh, and, you know, the defund the police, it, it's not real clear what exactly that, that means. Uh, the second difference was the religious uh, leadership of the of this, uh, 1950 and 60 civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King, pastor of a black uh, Baptist church, uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Council uh, led uh, a lot of the protests. Black Lives Matter, uh, religious leaders have, haven't had the same uh, influence or leadership roles. In some ways, uh, they wanted to be more ec ecumenical, uh, you know, uh, have more uh, other religions uh, participate, but not really make it religion a central component of the Black Lives Matter movement. And then finally, the repression. Uh, we have to remember the 1950s and 60s uh, civil rights movement uh, activists were were assaulted, uh, in fact, assassinated. In, in some cases, there were uh, Medgar Evers, who was the NAACP leader in Mississippi, was assassinated. That really that level of violence really hasn't happened with the Black Lives Matter movement. The police have been pretty constrained in comparison. So those are three, I think, differences. Professor Rodriguez, do you talk about the public's perception of the civil rights movement back in the 50s as to as compared to today? Because we are seeing some similarities, but like as you just mentioned, there are a lot of differences. Right. One, one of the um, the big uh, public, uh, there was a lot of public support for the 50s and 60s civil rights movement. Remember those those images of the water cannon being used, the, the German shepherds being sicked on uh, the activists? That brought a lot of sympathy from many Americans uh, and white Americans as well, who, who you know, really sympathize with, with those activists. And, and you see similar things with the Black Lives Matter movement. There is a lot of support. The protests uh, this last year, uh, you know, in small communities, amongst uh, whites as well as African-Americans. Um, the, the big difference though is that the local communities in the 1950s and 60s were very, not very supportive, of course, in the South, right? Uh, the, 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 the police chiefs, the politicians were all white. Uh, a lot of assaults, uh, uh, you know, arrests, of, of mistreatment of activists. The Black Lives Matter movement, uh, you know, in many cases happening in, in cities uh, where African-Americans you know, are, are part of the leadership uh, have not faced that that same level of local, uh, you know, antagonism. Sure. Yeah. We want to continue that conversation. We appreciate you joining us, Professor Rodriguez, with your insight on this as well. Milwaukee County.